Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on normality testing residuals in ANOVA using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, because of the types of research designs that we use, we want to run ANOVAs to see if there are significant differences between groups. So in the SPSS statistics data editor here, I have fictitious data. I have four variables, an ID variable, an independent variable named program that has three levels, individual, group, and treatment as usual, a variable named gender that has two levels, male and female, and then a continuous variable, a dependent variable, motivation. And let's just assume that this is measuring the motivation level to discontinue substance use. And of course in the substance use treatment field we believe that motivation plays a significant role. So in order to conduct an ANOVA here we have to meet the assumptions for ANOVA. And one of those assumptions is that the residuals are normally distributed. Now what happens oftentimes is that Instead of computing residuals, we'll use the raw data in the variable, for example here in motivation, and we'll test for normality for each level of the independent variable. So if we were working with just the gender variable, and we did not have the program variable, we would test the normality for all the males on the motivation dependent variable and all the females on the motivation dependent variable. So that would be two tests of normality, one for the male participants and one for the female participants. In this case, because I also have the program independent variable and has three levels, to test each combination of the independent variables, we would have to run six tests of normality. We'd have individual for male, group for male, treatment as usual for male, and then individual group and treatment as usual for female. So that would be six levels. Now certainly we can do that, but in this instance it may be easier to compute the residuals and run a normality test on them. In SPSS it's not particularly difficult to save a new variable that contains the residuals. So to do that I'm going to go to Analyze, and then General Linear Model and Univariate, and this is what the dialog looks like by default. And I'm going to load gender and program into fixed factors and motivation as a dependent variable. And here I'm just going to go under save. And I'm going to save the unstandardized residuals and click continue. Then OK. And take a look at the output. Now we want to focus on the normality testing residuals but I do want to take a quick look at this. We see here that we have 60 males and 60 females and 40 participants in each of the levels of the independent variable program. And it's also noteworthy here that we have a, an interaction effect between gender and program that is statistically significant. But the reason I ran this is to generate the residuals. And you can see here that we have a new variable and it contains the residuals for all the values of motivation. Before we test the residual variable for normality, I want to explain what the residual is. So you can see here in the for the first record, record 1, the residual is negative 10.3. So what this represents is this value for motivation, the motivation value for record 1, minus the mean for this combination of the independent variables, right? So for individual and male, for this group here, we know the mean is 52.3. So 42 minus 52.3 is negative 10.3. If we move down to the first record of the next combination, which would be group and male, we can see that we have a score for motivation of 44 and a residual of negative 6.45.
So we happen to know the mean here for group and male for all these values is 50.45. So again, 44 minus 50.45 is negative 6.45. So that's how the residual is calculated. So now let's test to see if this residual variable, if these values are normally distributed, if the residuals are normally distributed. So we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. And here we're just going to move the new variable, res underscore 1, residual variable, over to the dependent list. Under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf. I'm going to check off Histogram. And then I'm going to check off Normality, Plots with Tests. Click Continue. I'm going to make no other changes. And click OK. So we can see we have 120 residuals. Residual for motivation, we can see here the skewness is fairly close to zero, 0 0.054, and their kurtosis is negative 0.249, so not too far away from zero. So the skewness and kurtosis both look fairly good. And then moving down to the test of normality, SPSS provides the results from a two test of normality, and typically I interpret the Shapiro-Wilk but I'll take a look at the results of both of these because you may be using the Komogorov Smirnov or the Shapiro Wilk. So you can see for the Komogorov Smirnov or the KS test, the p value is 0.2, so it's not statistically significant. So based on that, we would assume that the residual for motivation is normally distributed. And then for Shapiro Wilk, the p value is 0.779, again, not statistically significant. So once again, we would assume residual for motivation is normally distributed. Using the skewness and kurtosis, as well as either the Kolmogorov smirnov or the Shapiro-Wilk test is useful, but we also want to take a look at the histogram and the QQ plot. So taking a look at the histogram for residual for motivation, we can see this appears to be normally distributed. It looks like it's fairly close to being normally distributed. We're looking for that bell curve shape, and we, we mostly have it here with this histogram. So this doesn't appear to be a problem. Moving down to the normal QQ plot for the residual variable, we're looking for these points to be very close to the line. And you can see that does appear to be the case. So when we look at the QQ plot, the histogram, the results from, say, the Kolmogorov Smirnov or the Shapiro-Wilk, and the skewness and kurtosis, when we weigh all this together, the residuals appear to be normally distributed. Now moving back to the data editor view, when I formed the residual variable, I used Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, and then under Save, I checked off unstandardized. So that variable contains the unstandardized residuals. But what would happen if I checked off standardized and used those? So now I've unchecked unstandardized and checked off standardized, click continue, click OK, move back to the data editor and you can see I had the residuals that I calculated before and now I have the standardized residuals. So now I'll check the normality of both the unstandardized residuals and the standardized residuals. So go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. And you can see I already have the unstandardized residuals loaded in from the prior analysis. So I'm just going to add the standardized residuals. And then under Plots, of course, it's still Normality Plots with Tests and the histogram. Press continue and then OK. And we can see that we have residual for motivation. So this is the unstandardized residual. And then we have the standardized residual for motivation. And you'll notice that the skewness and kurtosis values are identical for both of these variables. And looking down at the test of normality, again, the results for the Kolmogorov Smirnov and the Shapiro Wilk identical for unstandardized 
residual and standardized residual. So for testing the normality of residuals, I usually use the unstandardized residual, but you can use the standardized residual as well. It will give you the same result. I hope you found this video on testing the normality of residuals in ANOVA and SPSS to be helpful. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.